little thing called a toy lander. And uh, it helps us because it keeps us at walking pace. So we've got young uh, Hugh Williams leading off with the camel trophy, the little uh, sand coloured one. And uh, that was a device that was built by his dad. So uh, he used to belong to his big brother, but his big brother's too big, big to sight in it now. And then we've got young Austin, who wasn't born when we did last year's uh, celebration. And he's been paraded around with his mum and dad, and we'll see if they can keep up. Following that, as I say, 75 years ago, about three weeks and a couple of days, on the 30th of April, uh, in Amsterdam, there was a vehicle shown off for the first time. It was a vehicle that was designed in Anglesey, so it's got a good Welsh heritage. Uh, Red Wharf Bay, if anyone knows uh, the area. A design was sketched in the sand. And it was an idea that uh, the Wilkes brothers worked on together, but uh, Fraser Wilkes particularly, and Maurice Wilkes, they, um, they came up with the idea of a vehicle that was better than the World War II Jeep that they'd been running around the farm and was getting to be terribly worn out. And that vehicle is a Series 1 Land Rover. And it had all sorts of things for farmers, like power takeoffs, and you could attach all sorts of attachments to it. Now, we're really happy here today because the one at the front of the parade there, the first green one, that is a 1949 Land Rover. And I believe it's the first Land Rover sold in Radnorshire and one of the first sold in Wales. It's got a fantastic heritage and it's been driven by its current owner, Colin, who's been looking after it. And it's really great that people do look after these really historic vehicles. Uh, we'll describe the rest as they come around. They're going to come around and then we're going to arrange up closer to you all uh, if you're up at the uh, north end of the uh, ring. So, following the... Oh, his parents are getting too tired. So they've, they've opted out of the big walk. Well, sorry, Ocean. Mum and Dad have got to do some training sessions. Right, so the rest of them are going to catch up on Hugh now. So, 1949, Series 1. Next vehicle behind that, 1952. Just a little bit of a design change. You'll see it hasn't got quite the same uh, shape, a little bit different, but it, it's as they're developing. Another 1952 behind that with the roof on. Um, I can't remember the year of that one. 1953, thank you very much. And uh, 1955. So these are all the Series 1 Land Rovers. This is the birth of Land Rover. And it's that birthday party that we're really celebrating. I had thought of trying to get all the drivers to sing happy birthday to themselves, but they seem a little reluctant. Now Land Rovers have been used in many different ways. And the red one is a fire tender. Now that means it's not a full-blown fire engine, it doesn't have the pumps, it carries water, and it carries equipment to where it's needed. So it supports a very, very important role. You can get anywhere, you can, you can save lives, that's what it's for. <laughs> Lovely grey Series 2A behind that. And those are both owned by the Jones family, who also own the little white one. So, then we see how the military have used Land Rovers. We've got the Blue Royal Navy 109, uh, which uh, saw active service, and I can't remember, it's written on the side, we'll see it later. And then the next two behind that with the British flags flying at the back, they're called military lightweights or air portable. They could strap these onto a pallet, hang it underneath a uh, helicopter, drop it on a parachute. It's gonna survive, and it's again gonna be able to be used wherever it's uh, needed. Next to a thing called a military wolf, a more modern, effectively a defender uh, Land Rover, but done in the specification that's needed for the army. Uh, this can include such things, and I think it's the second one, which is fitted for radio. If they needed to carry an immense amount of radio equipment, they need to really strengthen that, and it's got extra strong axles. Behind that, we've got a nice uh, 90. Uh, more modern Land Rover, then they're in no specific order these and then a blue series Land Rover 
as which you can see is full of camping gear, which is one of the great things that we do with our vehicles. There's Dave with his roll cage and he's born free and he's poor prince. And I'm not sure he has been attacked by tigers but, uh, or lions, but uh, maybe, maybe that's the case. You can see a next few, a set up for camping in different ways. We've got one with an overland tent which has been put away. It was a beautiful tent we saw earlier. Here we've got one with a pop top roof, um, which is a modern design of roof. And then the really bright orange one, that's a Dormobile Land Rover. And uh, the driver narrowly escapes uh, the, uh, the ignominy of falling out of his bed and getting stuck there uh, the other night. It was only witnessed by a whole bunch of his friends who helped him out a bit, so we won't embarrass him any further. You can see some discoveries and Range Rover coming here. Uh, these are vehicles that have been adapted for more serious off-roading. Uh, with roof tents on top, their uh, drivers and passengers have been camping on top of those vehicles. Uh, very in a standard Land Rover is capable, but when you add these extra features, these really do become go-anywhere vehicles. Behind the nice cream uh, Land Rover 90, we've got this blue one. That blue one is an ex-military ambulance. Uh, I think all the locomotives 127. 127 wheelbase. Um, and uh, that was the, uh, the longest prop shaft Land, Land Rover could get at the time. So although they called it a 130, it's actually 127. Hi. The uh, Army had 127 of these. There's a few still around. but. By and large, they've been used as overlanding camp, uh, campers, and Tony and Ruth uh, have been many places in that and had a lot of uh, enjoyment. Now, Land Rover decided they needed to make some more modern vehicles. So, on the back, we've got 75, although it looks a bit more like 72, the way the, uh, the balloons are resting at the moment. And that's the Freelander, um, a very successful vehicle. And then following that, we've got two absolutely brand new Defenders. And if you haven't been yet to the Land Rover, uh, South Wales Land Rover Club stand, the Festival of Land Rovers, then you've missed your chance to enter a raffle prize to win a day out in one of those. We've got three raffle prizes that we're uh, giving away this year. All our proceeds are going to the Air Ambulance. Uh, we've raised about 300 pound uh, over the weekend. We do further fundraising during the year. Um, but uh, Stratstone have kindly lent us these vehicles and sponsored us with a driving day in one of those and we're going to pull the raffle while we're sitting here in the middle in a few minutes. Uh, we're just going to get some vehicles lined up, uh, let, let you all have a look, look at those as they come past. Um, and then um, we're going to draw the raffle and uh, we'll be contacting the winners later. Um, the first prize, as we see it, is the driving day in the brand new Defender. The second prize is a remote control Land Rover worth nearly £100. And we have a third prize, kindly donated by one of the stall holders here, which is a uh, cast uh, metal uh, coat up. So uh, thank you for the people who have donated the prizes. So we're just starting to line up our vehicles now so that uh, we can. Um, just pause for a minute, we'll speak to a couple of the drivers and we'll, put, we'll pull our raffle tickets out. We will be taking another tour as we exit, so if you need a closer look at something else it will be coming back past you, but I think you'd say this is a darned impressive 75th birthday party with all these fantastic vehicles. I'd like to thank our marshals who are keeping us safe in the ring and also as we drive in and out and, and thank the people who've uh, made the space for us to move these vehicles. As I say we're doing it all at walking pace so that we all stay nice and safe and uh, we're going to let Mr. Colley get out of the ring if he needs to uh, down, down the bottom end while we uh, form up into a parade.
Now, I know a lot of the farming community here have probably owned an awful lot of Land Rovers, and a lot of them get used, abused, slung behind a barn, driven into a hedge, left there. And you wouldn't be surprised to hear that they just live their life rotting away. But actually, a number of these vehicles have been rescued from that position, and they've been lovingly rebuilt by their current owners and they've been brought back to life from a virtual wreck into uh, an almost pristine condition. Um, that includes all the way from a 1952 series which uh, it has been restored, there's information up on the, on the owner's pitch on our stand, uh, through some of these uh, series Land Rovers and uh, they you know, really do show the quality of work that some of these owners have been put in by the, yeah. you know, the way that they look today. So they say there's something like 75% of the Land Rovers ever made are still on the road. That's certainly the case with the older ones, the series, the Defenders. And in fact, Land Rover are currently buying back um, small, the, the old Series 1s, the Series 2s from places like South Africa and, and Australia where they haven't got so much of a rust problem we've got in Wales. And they're restoring those to pristine condition and you can buy one of those for 70 odd thousand pounds or even more these days. But you can see from some of these vehicles that are in front of you that if you have some knowledge, some patience, the willingness to learn, you can make that car yourself. You just need to find that car that's from behind the barn or in the um, behind a shed or in the hedge and you can get there. So we're going to park up the last couple here and then we're going to pull the last one round and the final grey one contains our raffle tickets. So we're going to go along ticket. and we're going to ask some of our drivers to pull some raffle tickets out and um, round you come so there's going to be three lucky winners for our raffle today If you're still here and we pull out your name and uh, number, we'll, uh, you can come up to the uh, Welsh Festival of Land Rovers stand and you can uh, join us and we'll talk to you about your prize today. If uh, it's a number that's not here, then we'll be in contact with the lucky winner over the next few days. Yeah, Gary's found reverse. He's only been loaned this car today, so... Uh, He's going to carefully reverse because he doesn't want to bend it. That would be very embarrassing. That's great, Gary. We'll stop there. <laughs> so Pauline's going to get out, and we're going to have a, we're going to have a look to uh, you've locked yourself in, Pauline. There we. There we go. <laughs> we, I think we've dropped the scissors that open the bucket that uh, has all the raffle tickets in. Ah, we may have a technical... Leak. No, no, no. The best laid plans of mice and men. Yay! We're there. So our queen of raffle tickets, Pauline, is going to shake them and then I'm going to ask a couple of the drivers to draw me a raffle ticket so that we can... Um... The bucket has now been opened, so there was definitely no cheating because none of us could get into it before now. I'm going to go around to the 1949 ambulance. I'm going to ask Colin to pull us the first ticket. As he's got the earliest Land Rover here, you get to pull the first ticket. We'll read out the name and number, and then we'll um, make a note. And I say, if you're here, so 
Yeah. So we have num a yellow ticket number 17, and the name is Robert. Hello? Right, we're on. Right, we've got a ticket that says Robert, it's number 17, and we've got a phone number that ends 6372, and I'm going to hand that ticket back to Pauline, who's going to hang on to it. And we've got somebody making a note. I'm giving it another stir. We're going to come round to Peter, who's got this lovely 1952, and he's going to pick out another ticket for us. And we have number 231, and it says Liz, S-W-L-R-C. So that is actually somebody who's helping out on the festival. So our Liz, yes it is. So our Liz is the lucky second winner prize. She's over there. So thank you very much, Liz. I can see you waving. And as our third driver... I'm going to reach in here and ask Gary, I'll give him another stir. There's a lot of disappointed people sitting behind you, Gary, because they were all hoping to drive this. And we've got 272, which is Steph, and we've got a phone number that ends in 9527. So I'll give that to you as well, Pauline. Thank you very, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, we've uh, say we've raised about three hundred pound today. We we do raise money at our other events, so I'd like to thank everybody who's entered the raffle and played with our toys on the on the stand who contributed towards that money. So thank you very much. Yeah, so we're going to now. Um, start up our engines and we're going to tour around again and all the drivers are going to be relieved because i'm not going to come and talk to them so i'm going to ask you to come around here down down past me and he's going to pick up he's going to pick up these three vehicles as he goes past and then we're going to circle around so you can all have a look at these lovely vehicles and uh then we'll, we'll be exiting the ring on the uh, eastern side. So just once again say thank you to the uh, ladies and gentlemen who are over there. Just be careful. Okay, let's get these. these. So Colin, you follow Hugh. Gary, you follow Colin. And then Pete. And then we'll pull up the rest to follow in, in the convoy. Yeah, he's... And then follow on. There we go. You've got a very responsible job, as Mr. Williams sitting at the front there. Yeah, turn left when you get to the fence. Yeah, it's a great job. Well done. And we'll turn around and say, if you've got any questions, if you're an old Land Rover owner, you got some questions, you want to know more, we'll still be around for a short while. It is getting towards the end of the day, but we'll be around for a little longer. And uh, do feel free to come. If you've got an old Land Rover that you think should have been in this display, then please look out for the Welsh Land Rovers. We hope to be back next year. Uh, we'd love to uh, come and show you some more interesting vehicles. We have a few different ones every year. Uh, so... Thank you to all the drivers. Uh, you don't need me prattling on. So, oh, there's Fireman Sam waving out the uh, fire tender. I wonder if I can get my 110 in here. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll uh, see you again next year, hopefully. I'm sure the Royal Welsh will uh, consider our request to come back and uh, share a few more interesting vehicles with you. Thank you very much.
Yeah, I wonder who I'll, I'll be able to contact if I did want to bring it. Well, maybe this club. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think they're all with the club, are they? I think no. they're further over with the different things, aren't they? Yeah. Like I say, we can get us both in for free. <laughs> Two days. That's it. There must be a fire somewhere. <laughs> yeah, because I could even message this, the society directly. Yeah. A couple of months before the show, to be sure. Yeah. So we're just moving the last few vehicles off from their standing positions to say we're coming round and uh, just touring the south side of the ring where we, we only passed once earlier. So uh, just to try and uh, make sure that everybody gets a good look at all these vehicles. Um, say, so if you're a fan of Land Rovers but not got one, you can still join most of these Land Rover clubs. They're clubs for enthusiasts, not just owners. If you're wanting to learn, and you want to learn about uh, how to be a mechanic. There was two young lads here yesterday who got an old Land Rover out of a field after 18 years, and that's how they learned to do the work that allowed them to become train mechanics. So they're a great vehicle to start on, and uh, they're a great vehicle that uh, hopefully will be going in another 150 years, uh, where uh, maybe one of those youngsters who was leading us off will be uh, out here talking instead of me. Not in 150 years. See the doors, door handles on that Range Rover? Yeah, he was telling us, they're, yeah. They're door handles off the Morris Marina. Yeah, because that's what Leyland did. Yeah. They, they used parts from other Rover vehicles mm -hmm. to save on cost. Makes sense. Yeah. Hang, see, Paul's got his hazard lights on. Don't scratch it, Paul. We've only borrowed it. Once again, we'd like to uh, thank our sponsors, Stratton. They've been very generous lending us these vehicles. So, uh, no, you can't take it home. Go and park it back up there.
Thank you very much to everybody for watching us. We have appreciated that. Hope you've enjoyed it. And say, so if you've got any questions or want to come and talk to us, we'd love to talk to you about our uh, vehicles. Thank you very much. Well, Dolch y Fawr i chi yn wir am yr Ardd y Gosfa hynna, dathlu 75 o'r o'r Land Rover, celebrating 75 years. I'm sure it's been, uh, everybody in the countryside has seen the Land Rover of some shape or form, but indeed to see how it has developed is quite astounding. But obviously from one staple vehicle that's been in the countryside for many years, we will move on to our next display, which is the Welsh Pony Cobb display, reminding us of how important the Welsh breeds are for us in Wales and the versatility of that breed. Pamor bwysig yw'r breed yma i ni yng Nghymru, er holl yn drannu. This display has been brought to us by the Welsh Pony and Cobb Society members and these individuals are lucky enough to own and ride excellent examples of the Welsh breeds that can carry all the family and compete with all of the breeds on a level playing field in every equestrian discipline. For those of you that are unaware, there are five sections. The section A, who also is known as the Welsh Mountain Pony. The Welsh Pony section B. Section C, the Welsh Pony and Cobb type. And the section D, the Welsh Cobb. So the Cobb in Cymraeg, or in Moya, or Hoch, or Vridia. Then there are the Welsh Panthers, small or large, depending what the...